In this video, what I want to do is talk about the expected value or the mean of a random variable one more time. Uh, we're going to add to it a small discussion about the standard deviation of a random variable. It's not going to come up too much, but I want to mention it. And then finally, I want to show you how to easily use the tools of R to compute these expected values and uh, standard deviations of a random variable. So uh, let's start with the expected value. And what I'm going to do is just do all of this using a simple example. This should get the point across easy enough. Um, and our example is we're just going to roll a single dice or single die. And uh, we're going to let our capital X term, so this is a capital X, just if you want to add a tail in there. Um, so a capital X is going to denote the number that gets rolled. And then uh, we know that each of the probabilities is one sixth because it's a fair die. So let's just assume that it's a fair die. And then we want to compute the expected value of what we're going to roll. So our expected value, which is denoted one of two ways, it's denoted either by mu for the mean, because it's called the mean of the random variable, or e of x for expected value. Um, what it is, is you're going to add up all the values, 1 times 1 sixth plus 2 times 1 sixth plus 3 times 1 sixth, and so on. So what I want to do is let's show you how to do that with r. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump over to r. And what I'm going to do with r is I'm going to just let x be the values 1 through 6. P is going to be the values uh, 1 sixth. Okay, I'm just going to put 1 sixth in here six times. There's actually a slightly quicker way to do that that I'll talk about uh, maybe later in the course. But um, there's some R tricks. If you want to add the same number multiple times, there's ways to do that. You can look it up for now if you'd like. Uh, but anyway, so um, X is our outputs of our random variable. P is the corresponding set of probabilities. And if I wanted to compute the expected value, what I would do is I would first compute the list of the products of those terms. So one times 0.1667 plus 2 times 0.6667. Um, so anyway, so I, I think it's actually worth just doing this one step at a time. X times P is going to give you a new list with six items, and it's going to be the products 1 times 0.1667, 2 times 1.6, 3 times 1.6, and so on. Uh, now, if I wanted to add up all those values, that would give us our expected value. And indeed, our expected value, if we roll a die, uh, is three and a half. Okay, so uh, that's what our mean is going to be. Is it's going to be three point five. So that's our expected value. And again, you can do that either by adding all these up. This is a small enough example. You can just check it by hand. It's totally fine. The next thing to talk about is what's called the standard deviation. And in general, the way that the standard deviation works is you're going to take the square root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you in full detail what the standard deviation of a discrete random variable is. Uh, but then we're not going to use it quite the way here. I'll explain a slightly different way that we can do this. But this is the expected value of a random variable squared minus the expected value of our random variable squared. So in other words, a random variable squared, what that means is it's going to be the same values here, except I'm going to square each of these. It would be 1, 4, 9, and so on. And then that would give us a new, it's almost like a new random variable. You could compute the expected value by multiplying 1 times 1 sixth, 4 times 1 sixth, 9 times 1 sixth, and so on. This e of x is just our um, expected value or the mean of the random variable, so we would square that. And it turns out whatever this is, um, where if we take the square root, that's the standard deviation of a standard random variable, of our discrete random variable, excuse me. Um, now, in R, there's a slightly nicer way to do this. What we could do in R is you could take the square root of the sum of all the terms x minus your mean squared times the corresponding probabilities. So let's do that with our example here. Let's jump back over to R. And so uh, let's do that here. So our mean of the random variable would be 3.5. So next we're going to compute the square root of the sum of our random variable 
um, squared. So it's going to be x minus um, our mean was 3.5 squared times p. And so if we compute this, this will turn out to be whatever the standard deviation of our random variable is. And so in our case, that turns out to be 1.708. And again, uh, the standard deviation of a discrete random variable is a measure of how spread out our data is. The smaller the standard deviation, the less spread out it is. The higher the standard deviation, the more spread out it is. Um, and so that's just a measure of, of that. Now, this also has a nice consequence for the binomial distribution. So for the binomial distribution, it turns out that the expected value is just n times p, where n is the number of trials, and p is the probability of a success. So this is not actually surprising in any way. If you have, let's say you have a 20 question multiple choice test. So you have a 20 question multiple choice test uh, where uh, each question has four answers, has four possible answers. Meaning there's four uh, possible guesses you could make for each question. Then uh, our n is going to be 20 because we're doing a trial where n is 20. The probability of a success would be 0.25. And so we would guess that uh, on average, we would expect um, five questions would be correct if we use random guessing. So if we just randomly guess the answer, we would expect to get approximately five questions correct if there's uh, 20 questions total, each having four possible answers, right? It's one quarter of 20. So that's the binomial uh, distribution. There's a nice simplification there. So the, the expected value for a binomial distribution is just n times p. And likewise, there's a nice formula for the standard deviation for a binomial distribution, and it happens to be the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. Okay, so we can figure out exactly what that is if you'd like. Um, I guess for this question, since we have everything here, let's do it. That's just going to be the probability of, uh, excuse me, the square root of 20 times the probability of a success uh, is p, so that's 1 fourth. Uh, times the probability of a failure is one minus p, so it's three fourths. And so altogether, this is going to end up being the square root of 15, because uh, 20 times three is 60, over four is 15. So uh, a little bit less than four. Okay, so that's our standard deviation that tells you how spread out the data is.